Hello and welcome to this manufacturing systems technology last module, module 48. Uh, as I already discussed earlier, we had done a lot of studies regarding Kanban planning determinist journey in situations where there would be an estimation of stocking needed or even uh, in situations where there are sub-assemblies and you have to do a Kanban balancing on the sub-assembly stage. Today we will be looking into another aspect of uh, lean manufacturing which is about how to probabilistically estimate the overall level of Kanban with a cost per view so that you have a cost in mind and which you really would like to optimize and based on that probabilistically can you be able to predict the number of Kanbans or the Kanban levels circulating in a system. So for doing that typically in a JIT uh, operation the master production schedule is frozen for about a month okay and the number of Kanbans in each working center is based based on the average demand of the period. So, uh, in this section we will develop a cost model now. So, considering the expected cost of either holding or shortage, you have to understand one thing that if supposing the level of Kanban which is flowing within the system is more than the level of Kanban which is needed by the system, always there will be a hold up of the material. And this hold up would be inducing unnecessary costs to the system. If you really want to make it a leanest uh, possible manufacturing system, any hold up should be uh, penalized through a sort of a cost per unit uh, which is being held up in that situation. Similarly, if the number of Kanbans flowing within the system are lower than the overall demand of the Kanban, there is a possibility that there will be a shortage of the material and such shortages are also penalized with some kind of a cost factor into picture. So, if we keep this in purview and say that the operating uh, level of Kanban is let us say some particular value n okay. and then we say that if supposing the overall Kanban level is above n, we are having a situation of hold up. So, we associate a cost ch per unit uh, box or per unit container associated per unit time at a work center associated with that hold up and then if supposing that is less than n and the overall number of Kanban is actually uh, whatever is flowing is actually less than the demand which is there. Uh, uh, then is always going to be a shortage associated and then the cost involved would be uh, taken as CS which the cost of shortage per container per unit time at a work center. So, having said all these and also uh, maybe generating a probability mass function for the number of Kanbans uh, uh, which are needed as Px, we should be able to somehow correlate all this and optimize all this for the minimum cost point where we can calculate the operating number of Kanbans. So, in case 1, the actual requirement of the Kanbans which is x let us say is less than n which is the number of Kanbans present in the system or the Kanban level of the particular system. So, in that case the holding cost that will be incurred may be calculated as ch times of sigma x varying between 0 to n n minus x times of p x. The term p x is the probability mass function for the number of Kanbans needed so supposing the actual requirement x 
is less than n as in this particular case, where every time there is a shortfall, x could be 0, x could be 1, x could be 2, so on so forth, x could be 1, n minus 1, okay, less than n. So, whenever this condition is being met, you are suggesting that the uh, numbers are always lesser than the actual level which is present, which leads to the hold up cost. This is actually also the expected hold up cost. The probability mass function is a very, very uh, common term which is used in uh, distributions and uh, the expected uh, mean or the expected cost is provided always through the, the parameter which you are considering like for example, in this case x is the number of Kanban which is the uh, variable parameter in question times the probability mass function for x number of Kanbans into the system. Okay. So, that is how the expected cost or the expected mean uh, is always defined uh, in probability distributions. So, I am not going to go into the detail of proving this, how this uh, summation of products would be the expected cost. It is a um, uh, very commonplace uh, statistical uh, equation. Uh, however, I would like to use this particular thing to estimate what are the costs associated so that we can optimize them to work on a Kanban level which we should be able to operate, okay, so that minimum cost is incurred always. So, that is case 1. Case 2, is a case when the actual requirement of the Kanbans x is more than n. So, x is more than n and obviously, because the actual uh, requirement is always uh, more than the level which is present which is n, there is always going to be a shortfall in the supply, okay, because the requirement is more than what is present of the supply. So, this is a case of shortage that the material falls short because of that and so the expected shortage cost in a similar manner. would be C s times of sigma x obviously would vary between n plus 1 and let us say it goes all the way up to infinity and uh, the expected cost would be defined then in terms of x minus n the total amount of shortage times of the probability of having the operational level at uh, x value. Okay. So, that is the probability mass function for the parameter x and this is the expected shortage cost incurred because of that uh, value of x always greater than n meaning requirement more than supply or shortage. So, the total cost let us call it T c for the operating level of the Kanban which is n. Okay, where n in one case may be falling short of the actual requirement, in another case may be falling short of the uh, uh, more than the actual requirement and may necessarily include shortage cost in one case and hold up cost in another case. So, the total cost can be a summation of both these expected hold up cost and expected shortage cost because x uh, can vary anywhere between uh, 0 all the way to infinity. Okay, so, there can be any level of Kanban that can be maintained in a particular system. So, the T c n here comes out to be equal to C h sigma x varying between 0 and n, n minus x p x plus C s sigma x varying between n plus 1 to infinity x minus n p x. So, having said that, the optimal value of n that gives the minimum value of T c n is the smallest integer
that will satisfy the following conditions. So, obviously, the if we look at the cost equation and the way that it goes, let us say we are plotting T c as a function of n. Okay. And uh, obviously, there is a certain level around which we are operating, which is the working minima level for the integer n, where T c n is the minimum cost, minimum total cost. So, the relationship that will be obeyed for two values n plus 1 and n minus 1 should be delta T c at n equal to let us say T c n plus 1 minus T c n that is the change of cost per unit the change of the actual number of Kanban's present okay, should be 0 greater than 0 meaning thereby that this slope here right here should be more than 0. And similarly, this particular slope here at the other end should be less than 0 that is the condition for the minima. So, we call delta T c n minus 1 equal to T c n minus T c n minus 1 should be less than 0. So, that is how you define the minima point corresponding to uh, the integer n where the total cost T c should be the minimum. So, if I now try to calculate these two expressions from the hold up cost and the shortage cost, I should be able to hit upon a situation when the probability mass function may be correlated to this minima condition okay, and may be correlated to a relationship between n and x in a manner in a manner, so that I should be able to find out the operational level of x. So, therefore, the minimum T c n condition, so for minimum T c n condition, delta T c n minus 1 should be less than 0 less than delta T c n. And uh, let us take the first difference delta T c n equal to T c n plus 1 minus T c n and let us try to calculate what really is T c n plus 1. So, obviously, T c n plus 1 then would be the hold up cost c h times of sigma x varying between 0 and n plus 1 n plus 1 minus x p x plus c s the shortage cost times of sigma x varying between n plus 2 to infinity x minus n minus 1 p x. So, if uh, I want to further solve this summation, I would like to place uh, a couple of things here, which would be uh, not changing the situation much. For example, if I were to put the value of x equal to n plus 1 here in this equation, then this factor n plus 1 minus n minus 1 should be equal to 0. Okay. So, I can easily write this as c h times of n plus 1 minus n plus 1 the value of x times of p n plus 1 okay, plus sigma c h x varying between 0 to n n plus 1 minus x p x plus c s value here which corresponds to addition of n plus 1. So, supposing if I were to add this term c s times of x equal to n plus 1 minus n minus 1 times of p x plus c s x varying between n plus 2 to infinity x minus n minus 1 p x, it will really not make any difference, because this is actually equal to 0 and so is this. Okay. 
So, having said that, I am going to just rewrite this equation a little bit into a more suitable form, where we say that uh, the first uh, term becomes C h x varying between 0 and n, n plus 1 minus x p x plus C s varying between x equal to n plus 1. I am adding this uh, subscript corresponding to n plus 1 equal to x, you know, in this particular sigma, okay, to infinity x minus n minus 1 p x. Obviously, because this is 0, this term is 0 here, uh, the, it does not make any difference if we add this to the overall shortage cost side or expected shortage cost side of the equation. Okay. So, having said that now, uh, so we are left with a sort of uh, equation where you have uh, the index going between 0 and n on the hold up side and n plus 1 to infinity on the shortage side. And I can actually uh, write this down uh, in, a, in a little different manner, because now I also have the term T c n, which is equal to C h sigma x varying between 0 and n, n minus x p x plus C s sigma x varying between n plus 1 to infinity, n minus x p x. And we are talking about a delta T c n term, which is actually equal to T c n plus 1, which is this value right here, which we obtained after these algebraic derivations, okay, minus of the value because of T c n, okay, which is obtained through this particular equation here. So, let me just write this down in a manner where it is more convenient and see what results because of all this. So, we can combine obviously uh, this two terms together because the sigmas are between 0 and n and we can combine these two terms together in an algebraic manner and I can write this as C h sigma x varying between 0 and n and I take down the first term here n plus 1 minus x. and further subtract the corresponding T c n value here, which is n minus x times of P x. And on the shortage cost side similarly, I take down the value varying x plus x varying between n plus 1 to infinity. And on one side I have x minus n minus 1 minus x minus n times p x. So, here obviously, the first term becomes equal to c h sigma x varying between 0 to n times of p x and the second term here tries to become equal to these get cancelled off and you are left with only um, minus of p x x varying between n plus 1 to infinity. Okay. So, that is how you basically uh, uh, get the final form of the expression here as C h x varying between 0 and n p x minus of C s uh, sigma x varying between n plus 1 to infinity of p x. So, obviously, then the condition that we initially had delta T c n which is equal to T c n plus 1 minus T c n should be greater than 0, it is the positive slope side, meaning thereby that the, the full and final term which has been obtained from the last step here, that is C h sigma n x varying between 0 uh, and n p x minus of C s x varying between n plus 1 to infinity p x should be greater than 0. So, we want to somehow uh, change this uh, equation form in a manner, so that we have a uh, more appropriate method of defining everything in terms of the probability mass function p x. Okay. So, here what I want to do is to sort of subtract and add a term C s sigma x varying between 
0 to n p x minus the same term c s x varying between 0 to n p x okay, minus c s sigma x varying between n plus 1 to infinity and put that condition that this equation is greater than 0. So, obviously, these two being same quantities if added and subtracted will not change the equation. However, we can actually uh, combine these two terms and these two terms in a manner. So, mathematically we can write this as C s plus C h sigma x varying between 0 and n p x and on the other hand we can say here C s sigma x varying between 0 and n p x plus sigma x varying between n plus 1 to infinity p x. Okay. So, that would actually mean sigma of p x x varying between 0 to infinity which can be treated as 1. So, the probability that there is 1 out of these uh, so called infinite uh, numbers of x where the Kanban level is needed. Okay. So, at least one of those would be needed because it is 0 to infinity it is a large range and any of them uh, all of them are integer numbers. So, in this whole integer range the probability of having one possibility okay, or one particular x would be exactly equal to 1. Okay. So, having said that then the uh, operating the, the probability mass function or uh, uh, the, the summation of all the probability mass functions between x equal to 0 all the way to the let us say uh, to the value n can be written as a cumulative distribution p of n and therefore, C s plus C h times of p of n minus C s times of 1 okay, is greater than 0 or this particular value which is nothing but the summation of all the probability mass functions where x varies between 0 and n should be greater than C s divided by C s plus C h. So, obviously, now we are seeing that uh, it is very important to estimate what the shortage and hold up costs are and that would define the, uh, the optimum cost level where you can operate corresponding to a certain level of Kanban n in the particular system. Okay. And having said that, if I consider the other cost equation which was uh, earlier taken to be delta T c n minus 1 which is nothing but T c n minus 1 or T c n minus T c n minus 1. If you may remember this was uh, just done initially as T c n minus 1. So, the way that you can obtain another condition here by putting this to be less than 0 is P n minus 1. Okay. Same thing sigma P x where x probably varies between uh, 0 to n minus 1, okay. uh, that is less than C s divided by C h plus C s. So, obviously, the optimal number of Kanban optimal number of Kanbans n can be obtained by P n minus 1 less than C s divided by C h plus C s less than p n and so whole idea is to look for a n which will satisfy this particular condition. Okay. We will try to solve a uh, problem example where we will try to find out how you know this uh, probability mass functions can be put together in terms of uh, uh, the uh, the shortage costs and the hold up costs, so that the n level, the operating level of the Kanbans can be determined. Here, we at the outset give a table. Obviously, we know that the optimal condition for operation here corresponds to a level of Kanban n obtained from the equation p n minus 1 less than C s divided by C h plus C s less than p n and the probability distribution table that has been given here can be represented as let us say probability number of 
Khan bonds and corresponding to a number of Khan bonds 0, the probability is 0, 0.00, that corresponding to 1, corresponding to 2, 3, 4 and 5 has been recorded as 0 0.20, 0 0.30, 0 0.35 and 0 0.10 and 0 0.05. Okay. So, in this context, this data is already provided of the probability mass function. There is a way, there is a full algorithm to calculate the probability mass function, which is beyond the scope of the syllabus at this particular point of time. But supposing that the probability mass function uh, of this Kanban's at a particular production process is known to be given by this particular table. Uh, and furthermore, suppose the holding and the shortage cost per unit time, $50 and $20 also are provided. Okay, so, you have to determine the optimum number of Kanbans uh, at which the system should operate to minimize the total expected cost. So, obviously, uh, here you are talking about a CH value of $50 per unit time and a CS value or the shortage cost value of $200 per unit time. So, uh, the C s divided by C h plus C s value should be really equal to 200 by 250, which is actually about 0 0.80. Okay. And if I wanted to calculate the cumulative probability distribution function from this particular uh, table, so corresponding to let us say the value of n equal to 3, the p n, okay, which is equal to sigma x varying between 0 to 3 of this probability uh, mass function p x, which has been defined in this table, should be equal to 0 0.00, that is the first value, plus 0 0.20, the second value, plus 0 0.30, the third value, plus 0 0.35. So, this absolutely uh, becomes equal to 0 0.85. So, you can see that corresponding to a n equal to 3, this condition here is obeyed and uh, then you know if you operate at n equal to 2 for example, if this were changing to 2, then the probability mass, the cumulative probability mass function P 2 would then in that case be equal to 0 0.5. So, obviously, the operating level of the Kanban here for the minimum cost would be 3, because the condition satisfied here says C s divided by C h plus C s is less than P n and greater than P n minus 1. And uh, uh, the P n here is 0 0.80 as you saw just about uh, a little bit before and P n minus 1 here is 0 0.50. And so, typically this, this is 8 5 I am sorry. And uh, so, the typically this C s divided by C h plus C s 0.8 satisfies the condition uh, 0.85 on one side and 0 0.50 on another side. Okay. So, the operating level here is 3. So, that is how you do typically the probabilistic uh, way of Kanban calculations in a system. How you calculate this p x value is again a separate uh, 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 a separate matter and uh, this uh, I think in this particular course we will probably skip because it is beyond the course of this uh, syllabus of this course to uh, calculate the probability uh, mass function methodology or the, to discuss the probability mass function methodology. So, with that I think I would like to uh, complete uh, this section on the deterministic model of estimation of the Kanban uh, and uh, uh, then subsequently uh, this sort of brings us to the end of this part or this uh, part of the manufacturing systems technology course. There will be a future module in which we will probably plan uh, uh, the, the quality and also the material handling aspects regarding such manufacturing, this completely, you know, computer integrated manufacturing systems or manufacturing systems technology. So, with that, I would like to close this course here. Uh, thank you for being uh, patient and listening to me in all the lectures, and I wish you good luck for your examinations. Thank you. <laughs>